Hi dears, today we can see some results regarding uh, Rayman Stilges integral. Before that we can see what is Rayman integral. integral. So for that let AB be a given integral. Then by a partition P of A comma B, the set of points X0, X1, X2, etc. Xn where A is equal to X1 less than or equal to X1 less than or equal to x n is equal to p. Now for example, I am taking the integral here a to b, right? This interval a comma b. Here I am taking the integral 0 to 2. The function here I am taking as the increasing function, right? y is equal to f of x, the function I am taking and the interval is here 0 to 2. So I am partitioning this the interval, okay. So here it is given the partition p of a comma b. So here I am partitioning 0 comma 2 into uh, partition into, so here 2 by 5. Then I am partitioning this into here 4 by 5. Then I am partitioning this. Six by five, then I am partitioning. This is eight by five, and the next one is ten by five, which is two. Right? So here you can see the partition interval as zero comma two by five, then two by five comma four by five. The next partition here you can see as four by five plus six by five. Then the partition is six by five, eight by five, and the last one is eight by five to so it is a bounded point. So here M I capital M I is the supremum of Fx. So here you can see the supremum. Uh, sorry, uh, M is equal to two by five, and here you can see M is equal to the upper upper integral. And here you can see the upper one is six by five, so on so on. M I is the supremum of all that. Okay. Uh, so here we see two by five, four by five, etc. M I capital M I is the supremum of F of X. Similarly, you can see E M I small M I is the infremum. So here in this interval, the um, small M I that is uh, 0, then here 2 by 5, then here it is 4 by 5, 6 by 5, 8 by 5. So the collection of all that infremum, if you are taking, that is small M I. So now we can see U P F. U P F means upper upper sum. So summation i is equal to 1 to n m i delta x i. So delta x i is nothing but the interval here delta x i is equal to x i minus x i minus 1. So here what is delta x i? Here you can see delta x i is equal to 2 by 5 minus 0. In this interval uh, the delta x i is 4 by 5 minus 2 by 5. Here it is 6 by 5 minus 4 by 5 like that. So Upper sum is UPF equal to summation I equal to 1 to A capital MI into delta XI and LPF equal to summation I equal to 1 to A small MI into delta XI. Right? Now, the upper Riemann integrable is integral A to upper sum F, uh, sorry, B, F dx is equal to infremum of UPF. Okay? Infremum of upper sum. It infimum of upper sum is called the upper Riemann integral. So here the supremum of lower sum is called the lower Riemann integral. Right. So when we can say that the uh, function is said to be Riemann integral means if the upper Riemann integral and the lower Riemann integral are equal, then we can say that the function is Riemann integral. So here we can say that f belongs to R. Okay. So if uh, uh, upper Riemann integral and lower Riemann integrals are equal, then we can say the function is Riemann integral. We can see the second result for every p. This condition is true. That is lower Riemann integral and the upper Riemann integral condition is l less than or equal to u. So m 
small value em t minus a less than or equal to lbf less than or equal to ubf less than or equal to capital m into p minus a now the third one we can see the Raymond Stilges integral the first one is Raymond integral uh, this you can see Raymond Stilges so for that addition condition alpha be the monotonic increasing function right and delta alpha is equal to alpha of x i minus alpha of x i minus the same condition say that thing but including the condition here as alpha be the monotonic increasing function so here the upper Raymond integral is integral a to b bar uh, not b bar uh, b sum f d alpha is equal to infimum of uh, upper sum u b f alpha and here uh, ro, uh, lower Raymond integral integral a to b f d alpha equal to supremum of lower sum l p f alpha okay and when we say that this is Raymond integral means if the upper Raymond integral and the lower Raymond integral are equal then we can say that it is the function is Raymond integral that is here belongs to R of alpha. So uh, you can see that if R of x is equal to x then we can say that this become this become a uh, Raymond integral. Raymond still just become a Raymond integral. Raymond integral if alpha x is equal to x. Now we can see the fourth one partition. Yeah, the partition P star is called the uh, refinement of P if P star contains P, right? So when we can say this P star is uh, the refinement of P. So for that you can see an example here. Here I have taken the inde uh, integral minus 1 comma 4 and P is equal to minus 1 comma 1, 2, 3, 4. So which of the following is the refinement of this P? Okay, the interval is here is minus 1 comma 4. So, I am uh, taking this Q3 is the refinement because all this partition value of P is contains in Q3. See here, minus 1 is there, 1, then here we have 2. So, 2, in, then here we have 3, so that is also be here. Again, we have 4, that also be there, including some other values. Okay, so here P star contains all the values of P, then we can say that it is a refinement. So here we can say Q3 is the refinement. Okay. Similarly, you can see if two or more partitions is there. So in the first one, we see in the partition like this. So an interval uh, like uh, 0 to 2 is partition into 2 by 5, 4 by 5, like that. If not, you can partition this 0 to 2 into some other way also. That is 0, 1, then 1, 2. So the first partition is P1, the second partition you get to P2. Again, we can partition into more and more ways. So if two or more partitions there, then the common refinement you can take as P1, union P2 is the common refinement. Now we can see the next one. Next result. Fifth one, if P star is the refinement of P, then the condition is L P F alpha less than or equal to L P star F alpha, where the U P star F alpha is less than or equal to U P F alpha. So when you are taking the lower uh, uh, sum, it will be L P F alpha less than or equal to L P star, but upper you have to take P star less than or equal to U P F alpha. Then one more condition here, uh, always a, Raymond, a lower Raymond integral is less than or equal to upper Raymond integral, that is here. Lower Raymond integral is less than or equal to upper Raymond integral. So the seventh one, if f belongs to R of alpha, if and only if, okay. If it is a Raymond integral, then the condition U P F alpha minus L P F alpha is less than F, epsilon. And the eighth one. If f is a continuous function, then directly you can write that f is a Raymond integral. Now, the ninth one, if f is a monotonic function, also alpha is continuous. f is a monotonic, either increasing or decreasing function, and alpha is a continuous function, then also we can say that f is a Raymond integral. Here, the eighth one, f is a continuous one, then it is Raymond. Here, if it is monotonic and alpha is continuous, then if it is Raymond. Now, the tenth one, uh, if it is a bounded function, 
then f has finitely many points of discontinuity and alpha is a continuous function at which f is discontinuous. See, f is discontinuous, alpha is continuous. If it's so, you can write that f belongs to r of alpha, that is f is Riemann integral. If alpha and f is discontinuous, then we, uh, we can say f is not Riemann integral. Okay. If both are discontinuous, then it is not Riemann. Any one of its continuous, then we can say that any one of them is discontinuous, then it is Riemann integral. Now the next one, if f belongs to properties, if belongs to r of alpha and the modulus f of is less than or equal to m, then you can write modulus integral a to b f t alpha less than or equal to m into alpha of b minus alpha of b. Because we have the condition that modulus integral a to b f t alpha is less than or equal to integral a to b modulus f into t alpha. So using that condition, here this is less than or equal to integral a to b m into t alpha. So d alpha is alpha from the limit b to a so that we will get to this condition. Then the twelfth one, if f belongs to r of alpha 1 and f belongs to r of alpha 2, then we can write that f belongs to r of alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Also the condition you can see integral a to b f t alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is integral a to b f t alpha 1 plus integral a to b f t alpha 2. Also you can see this integral a to b f t c alpha equal to c integral a to b f t alpha together the condition f is Riemann integrable and c is any positive constant. Now you can see the 14th one the unit step function. So unit step function the condition is if x less than or equal to 0. x less than or equal to 0 the point everything will be 0. Okay, if I am taking minus 1, minus 2, etc., the function everything will be 0. But if x greater than 0, the function is here 1. Okay, the function everything is 1. If it's so, then we can say that it is a unit step function. You can see it here, only 1. Here it is 0, this is also unit step function. So here is the result. If a less than, yes less than b, and f is the bounded function, and also it is continuous at yes, then alpha is, is equal to, if I am taking the alpha value, that is equal to the step function. Step function here is i of x. So i of x minus s, if it's so, you can write that as integral a to b f t alpha is equal to f of s. Then the 16th one, if f belongs to r, if f belongs to r on a comma b, and if uh, there is a differentiable function f on a comma b such that f dash equal to f. Uh, remember f is a Riemann integrable and differentiable function f such that f dash equal to f. Then you can write integral a to b f of x dx is equal to f of b minus f of x. So this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. calculus. Then the 17th one, a continuous mapping gamma of an interval a comma b into r k is called the curve. So curve the actual definition is continuous mapping of the interval interval a comma b into r k okay into r k Euclidean space then we can say this is said to be the mapping is said to be the curve right continuous mapping if that curve is 1 1 the function is 1 1 then we can say that r k is said to be the curve is said to be r similarly if that uh, uh, curve that is gamma a equal to gamma b starting and ending with the same then we can say that curve is said to be the closed curve right and then if the curve can be written as gamma x1 that is we see before partition like this like this we see more partition right so x1, x2, x3, x1 like that. So x2 minus x1, x3 minus x2 like that. So whose sum is equal to gamma of b comma alpha. That is if you take the supremum of gamma b comma alpha is equal to gamma of gamma. So if that gamma of gamma is less than infinity, then we can say that curve is said to be the rectifiable curve. Thank you.